Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about two very useful creatine scopes. So far you have learned that global scope is used to start a creatine that lives as long as the application does. However, most of the times it will be a bad practice to use global scope because we rarely need our creatines to be alive as long as the application. And for Android there are two very useful predefined scopes, which is lifecycle scope and view model scope. To add these, we need to include some of the lifecycle dependencies that I will put in the description. So I'll just paste them here in my build.gradle app file below the coroutine dependencies, sync our Gradle and go back into our activity. And now we're good to go. We can use those two scopes I just mentioned. So what I will do here is I will quickly create a new activity, go to our app package, right click new activity and empty activity. I will call it second activity. Click on finish. Gradle will sync and in our activity second XML file I will just put a simple text view here. Wrap content, wrap content and the text I will just set to second activity. Increase the text size a little bit to 50 SP. That's fine and we can set the constraints in the layout editor horizontally in parent and vertically in parent that's it um, this video is not about designing instead i want to show you if we click on the button which i actually already included in my activity main so i just included a single button button start activity and when we click on that button then i will start a coroutine and keep it alive with an infinite loop. So I will use global scope here, which is the bad practice. Global scope dot launch and use a while true loop. So this loop will always be running. Delay this loop for one second each loop iteration. And I will put a log message here that says still running. And then in the same on click listener. I will add, I will launch another coroutine in global scope. I will delay this one for five seconds. And here I will start the new activity. So when we click on the button, the first thing that happens is we start that coroutine that always stays active because of that while true loop that prints still running each second. And at the same time, we launch another coroutine that after five seconds will start our new activity and also finish this one. So let's create an intent here. Intent, import it and refer to this at main activity because we're inside of, of a coroutine scope. We cannot just write this here and pass our second activity class.java call it also on this um, start activity with it and also call finish which will just quit our current main activity after we started our second activity here. All right, and now see what happens if we start this app. I will bring up the emulator here. And here's our start activity button. And take a look in our log cat too. If we click on start activity now, then the coroutine with the infinite loop will start. It will print still running, still running. Now our second activity started. Our first activity, our main activity is destroyed. But as you can see, our coroutine from main activity is still running because we defined it in global scope. So it won't be destroyed if our activity is destroyed. Instead, it will be destroyed when our whole application is destroyed. And that is a very big mistake that can easily create memory leaks because if the coroutine started in main activity uses resources of that main activity, which is now destroyed, the resources won't be garbage collected even though the activity is destroyed because the coroutine still uses those resources. And to solve this problem, we should swap out this global scope with lifecycle scope from the dependencies we just included. And what this will do, it will stick this coroutine to the life cycle of our activity. So if our activity is destroyed, that means that all coroutines launched in this life cycle scope will also be destroyed. So if we now rerun our app, take a look in Logcat and I'll open the, the emulator here, click on start activity, then it will still print, still running, still running. And after five seconds, it starts second activity. 
And then it stops to print still running because we started our coroutine in lifecycle scope and when we call finish then the on destroy function of our main activity is called. That means our activity is destroyed and that also means that all coroutines that were started in that activity's lifecycle scope will also be destroyed or cancelled. And keep in mind that if this coroutine does a long running calculation and doesn't suspend, you must regularly check if it is active, otherwise it can't be cancelled. If you don't understand why this is, I recommend to watch my video about jobs and cancellation first. And this lifecycle scope will actually also work with the fragments lifecycle, which is slightly different than the activities lifecycle. And what you can see in the title of this video, another scope that is included in the dependencies I imported is the view model scope. I won't show you an example of that because it's just the same as lifecycle scope, only that it will keep your coroutines alive as long as your view model is alive. So I hope this video helped you to understand coroutine scopes and lifecycle scope. If it did, please leave a like and comment below and also if there is anything you didn't understand then Please ask your questions in the comments so I can answer them. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.